no my face is not on fire i'm facing the sun how beautiful it is it's setting right now um i wanted to share something um as i mentioned in my last video about the election that just took place yesterday here in the united states um i've been really bummed out all day today i woke up this morning i, I went to look to see what the results were of the election and i was really bummed out with the results um i think about the elections and what the people voted for and um i also think about how i've seen so many so-called christians and even jews out in the streets protesting against israel and i look at these things and they just like just kind of like bothered me it's had me really like kind of like down lately but then i think sometimes we need to <laughs> um i've i've heard so many preachers say that the message that they're given they thought it was for the congregation but it turns out that the message is oftentimes was for them was the lord speaking to them so i need to remind myself of some of the messages some of the videos that i put on here and especially the ones where i speak about um when i speak about the end times and how jesus tells us so many times in matthew 24 and 25 where he said these things must happen not they might or they could no no jesus says all these things must happen and then the end will come and we see those must things happening right now. So I wrote really quickly what I wanted to share with you guys in regards to the results of the election. As I read the results of Tuesday's election in some key states here in the United States, it broke my heart to see how so many Christians, how many, excuse me, it broke my heart to have so many Americans in these states voted in favor of killing babies in the womb. What I find just as disheartening is the hypocrisy in our nation. Chances are that many of these same people who voted to kill babies are the same people that are out in the streets protesting the so-called killing of many, quote-unquote, innocent Palestinians. And what about the most innocent of them all, the babies, the ones that are in the womb? What's the protesting for them? And what about the 210,000 people who were killed in an instant in Hiroshima and Nagasaki? I'm pretty sure there were some innocent people there, right? In those two cities. Was there an outcry then? No. Instead, huge celebrations were held around the world. The hypocrisy is sickening, okay? In these states, which is the key states was uh, Kentucky, Ohio, and Virginia. In these states, many of the citizens overwhelmingly voted in favor of other immoral issues. I know that some of us don't agree with these decisions, but unfortunately, we will live in this, we live in the same nation and will suffer the same effects of these evil decisions. But the good news is this, God will soon judge this nation and the people who vote for things that go completely against his word. And that judgment will be very harsh. But he will protect those whose hearts seek after him and for his will to be done. So has America crossed the proverbial line as I, um, I put the subject of this, this uh, video? Has America crossed that proverbial line with God? I believe so. But don't go by what I say. Go by what the word of God says. First, let me share something educational with you guys. I'll, it'll support what I'm, uh, the scriptures that I'm going to share with you guys. I want to share something. If you know anything about computer programming, there, there are if-then commands put into the programs. I don't know much about programming, but one thing I'm pretty good at is spreadsheets, especially in Excel. The if-then if function in Excel is a powerful way to add decision-making to your spreadsheets. It tests a condition to see if it's true or false, and then carries out a specific set of instructions based on the results. I want to read that last line because it's going gonna, it's gonna to perfectly fit with, with the scriptures I'm going to share. It tests a condition to see if it's true or false and then carries out a specific set of instructions based on the results. So as I read these scriptures, pay close attention to the if then that God has programmed into these verse applications and the desired results. So in 2 Chronicles 7.14, and you're gonna have to excuse me because I used a little bit of, uh, 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 I added a couple of words, but I'll read the original verse and then I'll, I'll read it again with what I added, okay? In 2 Chronicles 17 and 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name 
will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive the sin and I will heal their land. I didn't add anything here, but it says, if my people, if my people will turn from their ways, then I, God, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive the sins and heal their lands. There's the if then right there, okay? And then in Acts 3.19, it says, repent and turn and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshment may come from the Lord. And here's what I added. In repent, it's understood that it says, if you repent. If you repent, then, and then God will turn and turn to God, then God will give you refreshing, okay? So this is if then that. If you do this, God will do this. In uh, 1 John, we read, it's 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, then he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I added the then there. The if I didn't. But if we confess, then he is faithful and just to forgive. Second Chronicles 30 verse 9. For the Lord your God is gracious and compassionate. He will not turn his face from you if you return to him. I added then. Okay. For the Lord your God is gracious and compassionate. Then he will not turn his he will he will not turn his face from you. That's if you return to him. And then finally in James 4 8 it says, Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. I added the if and then in here. If you come near to God, then he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. Okay, and then finally, in Ezekiel it says, the Lord says, For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the sovereign Lord. Repent and live. And I added, if you repent, you will live. So anyway, there's, there's um, God's going to do things, but we have to do something too. And so God says, if you do this, I will do this. And I've mentioned many times in my videos before where my favorite book is the book of um, uh, Proverbs, where the book of Proverbs clearly tells us if you do this good thing, you'll get this good result. If you do this bad thing, you'll get this bad result. And that's why I think the book of Proverbs is the best instruction manual for humanity. If we follow that book and follow according to the way that the Lord tells us, it'd be beautiful. So these are the if thens of God. If you do something, that you're commanded to do according to the word of God, not in your own sight, in your own eyes, or in the eyes of the world. If you do them according to what God commands, then he will do what he promises to do. So how beautiful it is to see this. So anyway, so I said at the end that do I feel that we've crossed, crossed that uh, proverbial red line with God? I do. And really quickly, I want to mention, I, I mentioned it a couple times, maybe two times in some of my videos in the past, where a message that the Lord spoke to me through, through the Holy Spirit uh, back on, um, it was May 9th, uh, 2020. Right when we started COVID, I was praying, Lord, what is your message through this? What are we supposed to learn? What are we supposed to learn through this pandemic that's going on, not just in our country, but around the whole world? And the Lord spoke to me through the Holy Spirit and the Lord said they missed it. Humanity has missed the message. The message was that if they turn to me, I will heal them. If they turn to me, I will show them the right way. If they turn to me, but instead they didn't turn to the Lord, to the Lord. they turned to man. They turned to scientists. They turned to politicians. They turned to, to the teachers and doctors and everybody else except for God. And many people left the church. And with that, I'm going to end here because my next video is going to talk about that. Talk about people leaving the church and how it's all fitting into end times prophecy. God bless you, my friends.